All right, if you'll take your Bibles tonight, let's turn to 2 Kings, chapter number 20. 2 Kings, chapter number 20. We've been looking at the reign of Hezekiah for the last couple of our studies here in 2 Kings. We're getting close to the end of the book. First, we saw the revival under Hezekiah, which was a good thing. And what a blessing that finally the nation of Judah was appeared to be turning around. And uh, the, all the idols were taken out of the land. All the high places were taken out of the land. And they returned to worship of the Lord. And then uh, last week we saw Hezekiah versus Assyria and how that the fact that he returned the nation of Judah to the Lord brought the blessing of the Lord fighting the battle for Judah against Sennacherib. They didn't have to lift not even a sword and the Lord slew 180,000 of their enemy and uh, they didn't have to have fight at all. The Lord fought the battle for them. What a blessing. Now we're going to read 2 Kings chapter number 20 and then we'll have a word of prayer. We'll look at, uh, with just the first 11 verses that we're going to deal with tonight so we'll just read down that far. 2 Kings 20 verse number 1 In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which was good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, uh, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And I, Isaiah saith, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord shall do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And it's talking about on the sundial. And, so, and Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backwards 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. All right, let's uh, begin with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we just thank you tonight for those that have come out for the Bible study and prayer time. We just pray that you bless this time together as we look at this uh, part of Hezekiah's life where he, his life got extended by the Lord. And Lord, we just pray uh, that you would uh, help us to glean the truths that we need to glean from the, the message tonight. And may you be honored and glorified in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, we see, first of all tonight, we see Hezekiah's prognosis from the Lord. Hezekiah's prognosis from the Lord. And that's found in verse number 1. Uh, in those days Hezekiah was sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now understand when this was taking place. It says, In those days. And those days is referring to the same days that we're talking about in verse 19. In other words, when uh, when Sennacherib's army was actually uh, oppressing Jerusalem, 
Um, he was, had them under siege and was hoping to get them to surrender. They refused to surrender. Um, and, you know, we, we're kind of familiar with the expression, when it rains, it pours, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you could say that was happening in Hezekiah's life at this particular time. Um, you know, we kind of use that phrase when we've been overwhelmed with multiple negative circumstances of life at the same time. Well, I can just imagine that with Hezekiah in Jerusalem being under siege, and with him dealing with a serious illness, and then having the bad news on top of this, of his impending death delivered to him, he was probably feeling a, more than a little bit overwhelmed, don't you think? I mean, little, that's, that's quite a bit to handle. And so, you know, last week we saw that the Lord fought the battle against the army of Sennacherib for him, but that had not taken place at this point. Notice verse 6. Verse 6 says, I will add in the, thy days 15 years, notice the next phrase, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. So that deliverance that we, that we talked about last week had not taken place. It was, this was along the same times that this was taking place. It's just a different, uh, you're, you're getting a, a side story of something else that was going on. And that's uh, what was happening in, in Hezekiah's personal life. Now, we know that when we're ill, especially when we're seriously ill, negative circumstances have a way of being magnified, don't they? Yeah. I mean, we, we think the worst. We, we really, really do. And, and the negative circumstances have a way of being magnified to such an extent that we have trouble seeing the good in it all. Yeah. And th there is some good you know we might not be able to see it but we need to understand that god is good all the time and god had purpose god had a reason for telling him hey your time your time on earth is done i'm fixing to take you home uh, get your affairs in order uh, understand that this was taking place in spite of the spiritual revival now we might think uh, well, with spiritual revival happening under Hezekiah, surely the Lord would want him to remain in power. I mean, that's our thinking. Uh, even though Hezekiah had been a catalyst behind the spiritual revival in the nation of Judah, his nation was besieged by Assyria. And he still contracted this deadly illness. And now he was being told by the Lord's prophet Isaiah to prepare for death because he was about to die. All of this while he was trying to do right with the Lord. He was doing, doing that which was good in the sight of the Lord. Now, here's an important point uh, we need to understand. You ought to write this down somewhere in your Bible. Even the most godly of the Lord's servants in this world get sick and at some point die. I don't care who you're talking about. I mean, we've seen some great saints of God in just the past few couple of years go home to be with the Lord. Um, being God's child and even serving God does not exempt one from having to deal with oppression, sickness, and death. I mean, oppression is part of the being in this world, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, and we know that sickness and death are too. Death is a divine appointment, according to Hebrews 9, 27. And as is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment... Job 14 verse 1 says, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And we can say amen. I mean, we, we all have experienced our, our part of a life's troubles at some point or another. And if you haven't experienced any of that, just wait. It's coming. <laughs> we, 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 we all do. Uh, because it's a part of living in a sin-cursed world. Even though God loves us, even though we may be trying to serve Him, even though we uh, are serving him, doesn't mean that uh, sickness is not going to come and that death is not going to come. At some point, it's going to come. So understand. let's understand the nature of Hezekiah's illness. There in verse number 7, it says, And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Now, Verse 7 into here indicates that Hezekiah's sickness was associated with a boil of some kind. 
And we can't be sure exactly what kind of boil it was, but it's very possible that he had a staph infection. Because a boil, you just got pus in it. That's the nature of a boil is it has pus. And so uh, you think about the times that they lived in there. Weren't exactly known for hygiene. Yeah, they just weren't. And uh, we know how very serious and deadly staph infections are in our day. And we've got antibiotics to fight them with. Of course, people don't take the antibiotics like they're instructed to. And so we have antibiotic antibiotic resistant strains of staph infections uh, that they have trouble getting rid of. But we know that how very serious and deadly staph infections are uh, and if left untreated they can cause a condition in the body known as sepsis. And sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection. It's a life-threatening medical emergency. Sepsis happens when an infection you already have triggers a chain reaction throughout your body and without timely treatment that we have available, sepsis can rapidly lead to tissue damage, organ failure, and death. And that's where he was at. Hey, I don't know how long he'd had this boil, but uh, I, it had gotten to the point where the Lord said, you know, you better get your affairs in order, you're fixing to die. Now, let's understand the message from the Lord to Hezekiah there in first, uh, the latter part of verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now, as Hezekiah lay on his deathbed, his sick bed, the prophet Isaiah giving that message from God. And this is a dreaded message that in our day is normally delivered by a medical professional to someone who has a terminal illness. Um, but here, the man of God delivered it to him because that was God's way of getting the word to people in that day. They didn't have the Bible like you and I have. Um, he would spoke, speak to the prophet, and the prophet would go say, this is what the, this is what the Lord told me to tell you, and he'd give him, give him the message. Um, he was saying here in so many words, do whatever you need to do to get prepared to die because death's coming. Now, that's a message that will hit you like a ton of bricks, even when you might be expecting it. I mean, you might know you got something serious, but when, it, when, when they get it to that serious nature and say, hey, you need to make sure you got all your affairs in the world, it's not going to be very long, and you're, you're going to die. In our day, setting one's house in order might include needing to do such things as making sure your will is updated, right? Or making sure your family's told what they need to know. You know, let your wife know where you got a hundred thousand dollars stashed at. There's not, there's none stashed here. It's, it's not going to be there. I can trust, you can trust me. It's not there. Um, but you know, there's certain things that they need to know, and so you, 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 what you do is you make sure that they know. That's setting one's house in order. So we see Hezekiah's prognosis from the Lord. Second thing we see in verse two and three, we see Hezekiah's prayer too. The Lord. Look at verse 2 and 3 again. Then he turned his face to the wall. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> and he turned away from Isaiah, turned his face to the wall, and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. Hezekiah wept sore, and at some point while he was weeping, he Isaiah just walks out, goes out to the middle court area there uh, of the palace, and uh, uh, we see here, we're, we're not told that, you know, before this message came, he didn't take the matter of the Lord in prayer. He had this boil, but we're not told that he prayed to the Lord until that message of death came, when the message of death came, that's when he prayed. Now, we need to make sure that we're praying at the right time, right? <laughs> uh, should he have been praying about that bowl that was there? Yeah, yeah, might would have helped. Um, but uh, we're not told that he took that matter of Ill, his illness to the Lord in prayer until after the prophet Isaiah delivered that message of death to him. Now, we'll see what we are told here. At this point in Hezekiah's life, the Lord was ready to call him home, but Hezekiah wasn't ready to accept the Lord's plan. 
Who do you think knows best? The Lord. And we're going to see that. We're going to see, not this week, we're going to see next week, Lord willing. But uh, uh, the Lord's plan, he wasn't ready to accept it. So he prayed to the Lord to remember his walk and how he had done right in the sight of the Lord. And no doubt he was, uh, you know, when, when, as he was weeping sore, he was asking for the Lord to, to not let this happen, not, not let him die. Now, the implication is that he was asking for his life to be spared here. So we're not told specifically here. But there is a parallel passage over in Isaiah, chapter number 38, verse 9 through 22, that gives us some additional uh, information. It's, it's actually written by Hezekiah during this time. When he, he writes about this time uh, that in his life, when the Lord said you're going to die, and he, you know, he was having trouble with it. And then there's some, uh, there's a, a verses nine through twenty-two in Isaiah thirty-eight, and we're not going to take a look at that tonight. But uh, there are some of the words that he wrote uh, regarding himself at this time. I only want to share one verse with you. Isaiah thirty-eight fifteen it says, "O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things in the life of my spirit." So wilt thou recover me and make me to live? He, he, he was he basically praying for God to to, to make him uh, live, and he was having faith that the Lord will allow that to take place. All right, uh, let's take a look at verses four through six. Now uh, we see Hezekiah's promise from the Lord. So we've seen the prognosis from the Lord. We've seen the prayer to the Lord. Now we see the promise from the Lord. Uh, verse number four. It came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court. In other words, he's marching out and the Lord gives him a message like that. Where the Lord came to him saying, turn again. In other words, go back. Tell Hezekiah, captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. And on the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto the, uh, thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my service, David's sake. So, um, the Lord said Hezekiah would be healed there in verse number five of his illness. Well, he was glad to hear that. And the Lord said Hezekiah's life would be extended by fifteen years. Now think about that for just a minute. You know you got 15 years. Wouldn't it be nice to know if you only if you had 15 years that the Lord would give you 15 years? You knew, you would know when the date of your death was going to be, right? Do you think that would help you make better use of the 15 years or not? You would think so. Um, but, but we're going to see that he squandered these 15 years a little bit um, he allowed himself to be filled with pride later on um, but that gets into next week's message now the Lord said he would deliver Hezekiah and Jerusalem out of the hand of the king of Assyria and the Lord told Isaiah how to treat the boil uh, you know, uh, I don't know what pigs do but hey, if I get a boil, I'm going to try it, I think. <laughs> it's worth a try, right? Yeah. What could it hurt? <laughs> but uh, we see that uh, the Lord told him how to treat it. He treated it, and uh, he was healed. Now, we see, last of all here, we see Hezekiah's proof from the Lord. Proof from the Lord. There in verses 8 through 11, the Lord gives him a sign. Remember, the Jews were real really into signs. They were. And here we see Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? Well, why don't you just believe God's word given to you by the man of God, right? Just, yeah. just believe the word of God. Faith, that's what the way the Lord wants us to respond is in faith. And he responds in wanting a sign. He says, uh, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. 
And Isaiah said, the, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. And then he kind of gets him in on the deal. And he says, Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? Talking about the, the, the uh, thing that time instrument that they used and that had to do with the sun shining on it. And Hezekiah, verse number 10, Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. That's what it was called, the dial of Ahaz. And um, so we see this sign of the sundial moving from back 10 degrees was given to Hezekiah for confirmation of three things. Number one, that he would be healed from his illness in three days' time, fully recovered, able to go into the house of God. Okay? Number two, that the Lord would guard him and Jerusalem from being overrun by the Assyrians. We already know the Lord did that. We studied that in the last chapter, right? The Lord just took care of that and they went, uh, went back home. The uh, Syrians did. And that the Lord would add 15 years to his life. Now, that's our study for this evening. We might think that the additional years that Hezekiah was given by the Lord would be a blessing. Right? We would hope so. Yeah. I mean, from his, from his life up to this point, I mean, he's been a blessing to Judah. Uh, he has been a faithful servant of the Lord. And praise the Lord for the life that he had. Uh, sometimes you need to quit while you're ahead. <laughs> you heard that one? Yeah. Quit while you're ahead. Well, he, 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 he probably should have quit while he was ahead. And say, okay, Lord, you say you're going to take me. I want to be with you. Let it, let it happen. Let's go. Um, but we're going to see that we, that we really need to be careful uh, what we ask the Lord for. Because of the the additional 15 years brought some problems. One of the problems that we're going to see, you ever heard of the Dane Manasseh? The most wicked king that sat on the throne of Judah. Okay, we got the, most, we got the, we got the, the best king to sit on the throne of Judah. And right after him, his son that was born, notice chapter 21, Verse number one, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. When was he born? During that 15 years. He was born during that 15 years. Um, need to be careful. There can be a blessing and unanswered prayer. Or we should say when the Lord's answer is no. You know, the, and that no is an answer, right? And we talk about the Lord didn't answer my prayer. Well, maybe he did. Maybe he just said no. <laughs> you know, if you're on praying grounds and you didn't get what you asked for, then the Lord just said no. And the Lord does better than what we know. You ever prayed for something where the Lord's answer was no, and years later you come to find out how the Lord protected you in that answer? Yeah, buddy. I have. And I'd, and I'd go and say, thank you, thank you, Lord, for not answering that prayer. Uh, with a yes. Or maybe you prayed something where the Lord let you have what you asked for and then later you wish you hadn't. That's, yeah, that's not good, is it? So be careful what you pray for. So we'll pick up right here, Lord willing, next Wednesday night. Um, that's the end of our Bible study for tonight. Let's pull out our prayer list. We'll pray for the needs and we'll be dismissed with this prayer.